do you know him? Have you accepted him? Is he Lord of your life? Is he the one who is responsible for taking away your sins so that you may inherit eternal life through his sacrifice? If you can't say yes to any of those questions, then I highly urge you to seek him out today, right now. Welcome back to the channel, Biblical Truth Central. If you're new, be sure to subscribe, please, comment, like this video so we can spread the gospel around the world, so we can spread encouragement around the world because this channel is for glorifying God 100%. Now here we're going to talk about praying for our leaders. Praying for the mayors, those in Congress, governors, presidents. I can't help but put an emphasis on presidents, our current president of the United States, Donald Trump. Some people don't even want to say his name. And I'm not even talking to worldly people. I'm talking to so-called believers in Christ. Don't even want to say his name. And still call themselves a Christian. Still call themselves a believer. Still call themselves right with God. When they blatantly disrespect the president of the United States. I've heard people even go as far as to just refer to him as number 45 not even giving him the acknowledgement of you of saying his name i say woe unto you because the scriptures tell us clearly in the book of romans that we are to pray for our leaders that they may make right decisions wise judgment so that they may lead us in the ways that we must go as a nation. You can love him. You can hate him. You don't have to say his name. The fact of the matter is that Donald Trump is the United States president. And in my humble opinion, you're about to see another four years of him. That's just the way I feel about it. Does that mean that I agree with everything he says? No. Do I agree with everything that he does? No. Do I believe he should carry himself a little bit more professional? Yeah. But I do like the fact that he's real. And he's not a puppet. Like past presidents. Now, this post is not meant, I'm, I'm sorry, this video is not meant to be political, but it's kind of hard to not involve yourself in political talk when the scriptures call for believers in Christ to pray for our, our, polit our political leaders, to pray for our presidents. You know, we, we have to do it. It is, it is a commandment. It's not, a, it's not optional. It's not, well, I'll think about it. No, God says to do it because the Lord has put government in place. If there was no government in place, there would be no structure. And if there were no structure, there would be no laws. And if there would be no laws, there would be chaos in the land. Law comes from God. Law comes from the Lord. And law orchestrates government in which puts things in place for society. So we are to pray over our leaders. It, it does not matter how you personally feel about the president. It's, it's irrelevant. If you're going to say that you are in good standings with the Lord then it is required for you to pray for him. Is he saved? I don't know. 
Does he acknowledge God? Absolutely. Absolutely. Does he acknowledge Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Is he perfect? No. But neither are you. And neither is anybody else out there who are throwing stones at him. None of you are perfect. Nor am I. We pass judgment as if we all have it all together. We talk down on this man as if we could do a better job and as if we knew somebody else who could do a better job. Why not just do what the Bible says and to pray for your leaders? Pray that he gets wise counsel, like the book of Psalms tell, says. Pray that he gets wise counsel. Pray that he gets saved if he's not saved. Pray that he comes to the knowledge of the Lord. Pray that he brings prayer and Bibles back into schools. I understand that this is the um, the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, the god of this world, little G, is doing all that he can to push God out the picture. But here we have a leader that's not afraid to acknowledge God. Unlike past. You know, I um I can't help but think what type of of problems you could be bringing on yourself if you are cursing the name of the president. What type of problems could you be bringing on yourself when you talk down on the president? What type of problems could you be bringing on yourself, you know, when you make fun of the president, when you don't pray for him? Because if you're not praying for somebody, you must be cursing them. And you can't say that you're exercising love can't say that you're exercising love, which is the second greatest commandment. Love others as you would love yourself. Can you actually say that you love the president as yourself? Don't even try to lie about that. It's a fact. There are people who legitimately hate him. Now, I, for one, I just do what the Bible says. I have no problem with him. I pray, you know, when I, when, I, when I can think of, when it comes to mind, I pray for him because that's what the scriptures tell us to do. You know, you should take the Bible literally, folks. Don't just pick and choose what you want to do. And, and these are the same people who say that, oh, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored and the Lord is just doing good works in my life and, and God's this and God's that. But yeah, you are talking ill of your president you hypocrite you hypocrite that is what's wrong with the church that's what's wrong with the church there's lukewarmness in the church there's illiterate biblical people in the church who do not know what the scriptures say because had they known what the scriptures say they would not do the things that they do they would not say the things that they say Amen. You can't just do what you want to do and expect God to get off the throne and bless you. Oh, because you go to church, it's all good. Now you can't even do that. Now what? Oh, you pay your tithes and offerings. Okay. Oh, you help people when they need help. All right. But that does not make your wrongdoings go away. It's not, a, it's not a competition of right versus wrong. Oh, my good deeds, I'll do my bad deeds. That is not even biblical. That's more of a, a that is a new age philosophy. As far as saying my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds. So the ratio is going to fall in favor of the good. And whatever happens to me when I die, it's going to be something great. That's not Bible, folks. I'm sorry. The Bible says that our good works are like filthy rags. Filthy rags, people. Filthy. That God doesn't care about how much good you do. He cares whether or not you are obeying him. He cares whether or not you are doing the things that you're supposed to be doing for him. 
Amen? That's what God cares about. He cares whether you're you're applying the word of his word to your life. The book of James says, don't just be a hearer of the word, but do be a doer. Apply it. Amen? Apply it. If you say you're going to pray, pray. Many of you say, I'm going to pray for you, but are, are you willing to pray for anybody? Are you willing to pray for your president? The one that you make fun of? The one that you talk down on? The one that you hate? Because whether you say it with your mouth, you hate this man. There's a lot of people who hate this man. You don't have to verbally say it. Your actions speak loud. Your thoughts manifest in your actions. Nobody loves somebody that they make fun of. It, it, it's not, it doesn't happen that way. And I'm telling you now, if you don't straighten up, God is going to chase you. And that's the thing about God's chastening. None of us know what he's going to do. None of us know how he's going to do it. I will try to avoid the chastening of the Lord as much as I can. Because God may punish you in a way that you weren't expecting. You might lose your job. You might lose your marriage. You know, you may lose a loved one close to you. You might get struck with some terminal illness. A lot, anything can happen. Just for God to humble you and get you to sit down, repent, and then come back. But instead of having to go through all of that, why not just do what the Bible says? If the Lord orders you to pray, just do it. What the heck has Donald Trump done to you personally? How has he affected your life personally? Most people can't even say that it, he has affected their life personally. And as I make this video, there's still going to be some people out there, some, some wicked people who are still going to contest this and who, who are still going to try to debate it. But I'm sorry, there is no debating the word of God. You lose. You lose. Every time. You lose. So-called believer. So-called Christian. This is the problem. There's so much hypocrisy in the church. It's hard for people to, to want to follow Christ. Because so many people don't even read their Bible. So many people don't even follow what the scriptures say. And yet you call yourself a believer. Hypocrites. Back in Jesus' day, he called the Pharisees hypocrites because they acted just like a lot of these modern day Pharisees. You better start thinking about what you say before you say it. Because once our words are, are out there, they're out there and they, they can't be retracted. You know, God forgives. But, but once we say something and it's out there, there's no that's not there's no coming back from that in some cases. There's no coming back from that. Look, if you if you've ever spoke ill of you know of your president, there's always the opportunity to repent. You all you have to do is just ask the Lord for forgiveness. And then move on with your life. And then just go ahead and just pray for him. Pray for the man. Pray for him. Seriously. I mean, could you imagine being under as much pressure as him right now? Um, a, a president in a situation to where he was already under fire from different angles. And now he's dealing with a national emergency such as this virus that we're going through right now. But yet you have these disrespectful fake Christians I said it fake Christians out here because everyone's not a real believer there are some fake Christians out here that are just giving you know Jesus a bad name and you need to repent you need to repent of all the wrongdoings all the the rebellious spirit the the evil rebellious spirit the disrespectful spirit that is hovering over this country you know the people that are possessed by that they need to repent they need to repent because as long as this keeps up things are never going to get better 
Things are not going to get better if this keeps up. We've got to turn from our wicked ways. We've got to call upon the Lord and we got to ask him for forgiveness and repentance so that our land may be healed. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody out there. Um, if you feel compelled, share this video with somebody. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. God bless.